Oh hey yo! Today's story: Black holes and mime types. I suppose everyone knows what mime types are. So we have various files here, and if we、we'll、go to their properties, we see that each file can be of a specific type. For example, that's a PNG image. That is of a great importance because since we know the file type, we can next register it and open it with a specific application. But how GNOME Files guesses the proper file type? For better understanding of the mechanics, it's time to travel to everyone's favorite distro. So we're in the lovely Windows 11, and let's start by opening a file manager already, and go somewhere we can create a new file. Downloads folder is good, and then I will open WSL and create a PNG image from Linux. So convert, and let's make a 64 by 64 white square, and call it square dot PNG. Now we have our square. If we open it, Windows will open it with the image viewer. But if we rename this file to .txt, first we'll get a warning saying that changing the file extension may make the file unusable. Then the image preview will be replaced with a text file icon. And most importantly, the image will now by default open with Windows Notepad. And notice this weird character, and it will be the same for every PNG from every system created, Linux or Windows. For the next test, we'll completely remove the extension, and we'll again get the same warning as before. We'll also get a blank mime type icon, and if try to open it, Windows will ask us what program we want to use. In short, Windows are unable to guess the file type. So let's take personal action and open it with a hex editor. What we see here is that the first eight bytes are the file signature, and it identifies as a PNG image. And every PNG file starts like that. And moreover, the very first byte, that weird symbol you saw previously on Notepad, is a non-ASCII character telling us this is not a text file. But what is a text file anyway? Let's create one within Windows, but it would be the same even if we had created it from Linux. And next, let's open that with our hex editor. And what we see this time is that the file is completely empty. There is not even a file signature. But by convention, we assume these files as text files, so we open them with a text editor. And if we put something inside and reopen the file, we'll only see the contents of our string and nothing more. So, by observation, it is safe to assume that Windows rely on file extensions to identify the type, and we can guess this is due to performance reasons, because it would be more expensive to open each file for recognizing it. On Linux, and by working with Linux, we know that file extensions aren't such important. But that's not entirely true. Let's investigate. So we again have our PNG image, and the first thing we'll try on it is to remove the extension. Without an extension, if we go to File Properties, we see that file still identifies it as a PNG image, so no damage done. But if we dare to rename the file to .txt and check back on properties, we'll see that GNOME Files will now recognize it as a text file. And moreover, files will even try to open it with the text editor. So why this happens? Let me rename that back to PNG and open a terminal. Now, GNOME for I/O operations uses the GIO library. So let's examine how GIO actually monitors the files. Here we're looking for two attributes: the content type and the fast content type. According to documentation, the fast content type isn't as reliable as the regular one, as it only uses the file name to guess the file type, but it is faster to calculate. 
So, on this case, both the content type and the fast content type will tell this file is a PNG file, as it was most expected. For the second scenario, we'll remove the file extension and try again. We already know that in this case it will just work, and the content type will guess the file extension correctly, while fast content type will say it is an octet stream, a MIME type that is used for unknown binary files. And we're coming to the third and final case, when we rename the file to .txt, and we know that GNOME files will fail to recognize it. This time both content and fast content types will identify the file as a text file. That might be a bug, because at least the content type should have discovered the proper file type. However, the end user experience is actually correct. So, MIME type specifications, and we care to see the recommended checking order. So right away to the synopsis, it says there are several reasons for checking the glob patterns before the magic. Glob patterns is basically a match of the file extension with the MIME types database, and magic is opening the file and read the file signature. The first reason is that opening the file is expensive. The second reason is that many applications don't even care for the file signatures. And one of them is GNOME text that actually opens binaries. Also, users can easily understand why calling their text file readme.mp3 makes the system think it's an mp3. But they have troubles to realize why their computer thinks readme.txt is a postscript file. And in the end of the day, if the system guesses wrongly, the user can often rename the file to fix the problem. So if there is a file extension, system will always trust that. And if not, only then will perform a more intensive search. And that is perhaps why files discovered the PNG image without an extension, but it failed when we set it to .txt. Or it may just randomly happen. Who knows? Either case, there is a bug here, but fortunately there is a simple solution too. So when we open the file properties, GNOME files can perform a magic numbers I.O. operation to always identify the file type and file attributes correctly. And yes, KDE does that already. So if we open the properties of the false txt file, Dolphin will let us know that the type may be a text document, but the actual content is a PNG format. 